Hi, my name is Jesse Seeger. I'm a software developer on the Hawkware team. Um, we create uh, custom develop custom applications for our customers. Uh, as you'll see in this presentation, um, our knowledge spans many different areas. So if you have a specific idea in mind, uh, reach out to us. Uh, this presentation is about utilizing the web as a platform and how PDM fits into that. I see it coming more see it coming up more and more in requests and I also see it being overlooked quite a bit meaning people aren't really aware of the possibilities of using PDM in a website. Um, so we're trying to take PDM out of the box and give you new ideas and tools to take back. Uh, I'll have some examples and some demos to show, but it's more geared to get you to think about how you can share information across your company. Um, my goal is that if I can share a little bit of my experience with you, you'll be able to get a clear vision of how you could share information across your company and how we can help with that. So the agenda for the meeting. Uh, first, we'll discuss the issues with the current state of IT architecture uh, and the pain points that I see many customers dealing with. Uh, then we'll talk about how using the web as a platform can alleviate those pain points. And finally, um, we'll demonstrate how SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional can be used within the web. So this might look familiar. Your company has a lot of different systems and you're trying to share information between them. Each of your departments utilize the systems differently. For example, engineering might need inventory and costing information. Shipping might need the size of a product to be able to calculate shipping costs. Uh, sales might need uh, PDFs of released documents. These systems seem like they have overlapping data and functions, but they are nonetheless independent systems. They're completely used for different things by different people. But our initial response is to try to synchronize the data between them or integrate them. And there's a lot of tools um, that can do that. And I've So integrations can be very powerful, but there are some inherent issues with integrations. Um, you know, upgrades can be very problematic. If the vendor alters their software, the integrations can break. Um, they're also complex. Uh, they hide too much business logic. The business logic is where you try to take your decisions and business processes and translate them into software. Uh, what ends up happening is you try to compensate for really complex business processes, and engineers like to also try to catch all their bad habits and fix them in an integration. Um, but hiding complex business rules in software only complicates things more. Another issue is the what about this question. So oftentimes an integration is so highly automated that it only works for a small set of items. You exclude a lot of other uh, business processes that you might do. In other words, you only create a system that handles one type of product and create a wall for any other types of products that you might want to design. Uh, and they're also platform dependent. So what if system A runs on Windows and system B runs in the cloud? Um, how does your integration share data across these platforms? Uh, you you also have many different ways you can access the information. The different computers, different software, different software versions, different operating systems, all this plays into the complexity of building integrations. So this chart explains what happens when you start integrating your systems. So the left side under business silos is where your systems are all separate. There's no integrations. You simply access the information in that system directly. You can see it's very flexible and easy to implement and easy to use. Uh, near the middle under optimized core, you can see we take a giant dip. This is the result 
of the integration complexities we've talked about. You have inadvertently removed any flexibility you might have, and the implementation can be quite difficult. You may, you may have never had to sit down and define all your complex business processes, but this is where you're forced to do that. Uh, and moving further to the right, you can see things are getting better. Uh, this is business modularity. This is the idea of using the web as a platform. Business modularity is leveraging your existing systems and building a platform on top of them. So this diagram shows that. Instead of trying to synchronize all of your different systems, we leverage their unique capabilities to create powerful web applications. These web applications can be unique to each department within your company. For example, engineering could have features for creating change requests or approving files for manufacturing, viewing project status. Um, manufacturing could see up-to-date drawings, request changes uh, to help manufacturability, update work orders. Purchasing could view up-to-date um, drawings to send to vendors, or you could have a portal for vendors to log into. So using the web as a platform is all about locating resources. So you specify URL and the server returns the requested resource. It's pretty simple. Building a foundation on top of that can be quite powerful though. So here's an example of web architecture. So we're getting closer to um, how PDM fits into this. We have existing systems, including PDM. They all have certain ways to get information out. Uh, an API is simply a way for other applications to access the information within that system. Um, PDM has a specific API library that can only be used on Windows clients, so it's not web enabled. Uh, your ERP system might have a similar API, or you might have a web-based API, um, or it might not even have an API and only allows you to write data to the database directly. Instead of connecting each of these systems, like in the previous slide, we want to leverage their API in a web application and deploy it to the target business unit. So how does PDM fit into the web platform? So instead of having a clunky integration between the two systems, we create a web application that reads data from each system and displays it to the user. This is just one way that we could use PDM in the web. But the advantage of this is we can display only the data that is relevant to the user. Um, we can also provide some functions to write information to each system. <clears throat> but by providing a user interface, the user can make those complex business decisions and make sure the correct information is being sent to each system. This allows the integration to be much more flexible and robust. The user remains in complete control of the complex business rules. So how does this work? Um, our team has created a PDM web connector to allow customers to interact with PDM via the web. It allows you to request resources in PDM directly by using a URL. Um, this is a platform to build custom integrations utilizing the web. This opens up a lot more opportunities. So this is another way we could integrate data with PDM. Many modern ERP systems have mechanisms to access information uh, in other systems directly by specifying URLs. Uh, notice we've removed the need for a web application altogether and created the integration between PDM and ERP directly. Um, the ERP system can read and write information directly to PDM without any custom development. So what kind of things can you do with the Hawkware PDM web connector? Well, you can read and update data cards, transi transition files, get bill of material, get image preview, get any 
uh, file format you want, uh, download native SOLIDWORKS files. And this is all done via the web. So let's take a look at an example. So basically, this is my company um, intranet site that I've deployed to my engineering department. So I'm going to go ahead and search for some items in PDM. So this is our first example of using PDM in the web. I've created a search uh, form. I've searched my vault for some items and I've re returned some results. So I'm going to click on the first one. It's a drawing. And I get a up-to-date live preview. Um, I'm going to go ahead and transition this file. So I'm going to submit for approval. So this is interacting directly with the vault via the web. So I get confirmation that this was approved. Now that this is another spot where I could have other actions happen where data being sent to other systems, ERP for example. Um, you can see I have an ERP tab here where I can grab data from ERP. Um, so let's go ahead. I want to create a PDF of this at the same time. So right away I get a up-to-date PDF of the file of the drawing. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at the Contains tabs, navigate to the uh, the assembly. So we can also view the bill of materials from PDM. Now instead of just viewing, I uh, also have a way that I can uh, edit the bill of materials. So I'm going to go ahead, I can add and remove parts, so I'm going to insert a part and just whatever part number, and I'll insert five of these, and I can save this bill material. Now, this application is connected to my ERP system, so this bill material was saved to the ERP system. So this is an example of uh, taking data from PDM, sending it to ERP in a specific way that meets my business needs. Let's go back to this tab, look at the Contains tab, and I want to open up this, this tooth. Um, so let's take a look at the ERP data. You can see I'm pulling some information. I have some costing. I have quantity on hand, so forth. If I had any sales orders for this, I could show them here. Um, but now, instead of just connecting PDM and ERP, I'm actually going to connect to a third uh, system is my shipping system. So I have a ship from address, ship to address, and then I have a shipment. And this this data is coming from PDM. The weight and size that's important for shipping. So I'm gonna ship uh, eight of these, I think. And you can see my my package is changing sizes to be able to fit eight of these in there. So I'm gonna click get rates. Now this is going out to uh, shipping system and gathering um, current up-to-date shipping rates to be able to uh, ship this item. Uh, you can see it came back with some shipping rates, $45 for ground, expensive to ship this. Um, so let's go, I think I got a PDF notification, yeah, so this is from when I uh, transitioned that file to submit for approval. Um, I got a link, and this link goes right to the web browser. So um, your engineering team or anyone within the company can browse to this and uh, take whatever actions that need to be done. So this is all customizable to your specific business process. So I can go here and say, oh, this looks good, and I can go ahead and release the documents.
So, so there are many advantages of using the web as a platform. Um, I know I sh we showed it real briefly. It was just to get some ideas going. I didn't want to bore you with all the configuration and how that all uh, uh, plays out. But um, you know, the advantages are there's rich user experience. There's operating system independent. There's you know, it's installed in one place on the server, and and you can deploy it to as many people as you want. Um, it's programming language independent. Uh, it's based on well-known standards. Um, it's loosely coupled, which basically means if if you know each system is kind of free to to behave how it wants with with minor changes to to get it to work. Um, so it's very flexible HTML and JavaScript. You can show whatever type of view and create any type of business process that makes sense for you. So we only really scratch the surface of what we can do with this. Um, we keep adding functionality to it. But if you have any questions regarding this or maybe a current issue you're having with integration, I encourage you to reach out to us. Um, we're here to serve our customers for whatever their technology needs are. Thanks for joining us.